Martha tents. They're mushroom fruiting chambers that allow you to consistently grow beautiful flushes of mushrooms year round. Their compact design means you can grow mushrooms almost anywhere indoors. The great thing about having an indoor fruiting room is that you can grow a wide range of edible and medicinal mushrooms using a variety of techniques, including trays, blocks, and jars. We made this video to demystify this popular technique and provide a blueprint for what we consider to be the most consistent and easy way to build a Martha using materials you can easily find online at your local hardware store or at a hydroponic store. If you wanna grow mushrooms at home with consistent harvests and minimal infrastructure, Martha's are a really great place to start. A really cool thing about a Martha tent is that you can really set it up anywhere. They have a really small footprint and they're really low tech. Uh, they can be set up in a closet. They can be set up in a kitchen. They can be set up in a dining room. They can be set up in a bathroom. Really, wherever you have the space, you can fruit mushrooms. The term Martha tent originates from Martha Stewart's line of indoor grow tents. It's just a slang term born out of the underground mushroom community used to define a mid-sized grow chamber that allows you to control the conditions needed for fruiting high quality mushrooms. These conditions include humidity, carbon dioxide, temperature, and light. The dynamic interaction between these conditions is what makes mushroom growing in some ways a blend of art and science. We have here all of the things we need to build our Martha tent. Most of these things can be bought at a hardware store or online, or you could also go to some type of hydroponic store or something like that if that's in your area. So the first thing we have is our greenhouse. This is a small home greenhouse. They're really simple, really effective. They're good for growing plants, but we're gonna convert it to growing mushrooms. At the bottom of this, we're gonna be putting our drip tray. This is gonna catch any water. We have a four inch duct fan. It's gonna be providing air exchange. We have our digital humidity controller, which is gonna be controlling our ultrasonic humidifier. If you're gonna be in a space where you don't have access to a window, you're gonna want a filter patch and a hose clamp to go over your fan to filter out the spores before they enter your living space. If you have access to a window, we suggest getting some flex foil ducting. This is four inch ducting, and we're gonna be attaching this to the outside and just pumping the spores right out the window. So the first step in building our Martha tent is building the tent. So we're gonna open the box. So we have our brackets, which are gonna be on the bottom and on the sides. We have our vertical support bars. We have our horizontal bars. We have the peak of the greenhouse and we have the plastic greenhouse itself. And here are the shelves that we're gonna be setting down and our blocks are gonna be sitting on. So let's start setting it up. built this tent according to the instructions. You can see we have four shelves and then we don't have anything at the top. So we're gonna modify this slightly. We're gonna take the bottom shelf and bottom supports off and we're gonna put them on the top. And then we'll have this flat shelf here, which our duct fan is gonna be able to sit on really nice. And that'll give us room for the humidifier and then three shelves of growing space. Now, as you can see, since we took out the bottom, we don't have the support, so it's a little more wobbly. If you were to be in a place where you're gonna bump into it, or you have kids or pets running around, you might wanna consider stabilizing the base. Alternatively, if you got a tent that had five shelves, you would need to do any of that.
So now the greenhouse plastic is on. So our final move is to put this on the drip tray. Alternatively, instead of a drip tray, you could use a tarp with clamps and we'll show you that process too. So if you can't find a drip tray or you're waiting on one to come in, you can use a tarp or something similar on the bottom and attach it to the legs with clamps. Though the tarp works in a pinch, we still recommend using a drip tray. One reason is that it's a lot easier to clean, you can monitor your grow space a little easier, and it just has a better look. So we're gonna open up the tent and start installing our humidification system. So the humidity is going to come out of the top and you could conceivably duct that inside. We find that it's just a lot more simple and a lot more effective and easier to just keep the whole ultrasonic humidifier just right inside the fruiting chamber. As an alternative to an ultrasonic humidifier like we're using, some growers like to use this alternate humidification system. So this humidification system is a plastic bin filled with water with a pond fogger. So we'll put the pond fogger in, and we turn it on, and then if you look at the lid, you can see there's two holes in the lid, and one of the holes has a computer fan that's gonna blow air in, and the other hole has ducting, and the ducting is gonna take the air and the humidity from the fogger and pump it into our Martha tent. One of the advantages of this setup is that you have a really large reservoir of water, so you have to check on the water levels less. One of the disadvantages is that in our experience, the pond foggers don't really have a great lifespan and they're not overly reliable. For this reason, we really like to use the ultrasonic humidifier. So it's really up to your own personal choice here and how you wanna set up your system. Humidity is one of the most important factors for mushroom growing. Mushrooms are almost entirely water, and as a result, they need a really high humidity level to fruit properly. In the forest, where there's leaf litter and shade, there's a often a generally higher ambient humidity around them. If we're indoors, it's really hard to get those humidity levels. We obviously don't wanna be living in a space where it's humid enough to grow mushrooms. So we solved this problem by making a sealed environment like the Martha tent and installing a humidifier at the bottom. If we use a humidity controller too, we can really fine tune the levels of humidity within the tent, even within 5% of each other. This is really useful because mushrooms really need this humidity to grow properly. And if they don't have it, they'll shrivel up and dry if they even fruit at all. So we've got our humidity controller here. We've got this set up right here. So this is our power cord that's gonna plug into the wall. And this is our humidity monitor that's gonna plug into the side right here. And this piece is gonna be dangling inside of our tent, monitoring the ambient humidity. And our ultrasonic humidifier is gonna plug in right here. So we're gonna stick our humidity monitor inside the tent and we're just gonna dangle it off the back, a little bit off to the side. It's gonna give us a nice accurate reading. We're gonna take the cord and just feed it down back through the back. So here we have our humidity controller. So I'm gonna plug the monitor in to the side and then I'm gonna plug the ultrasonic humidifier into here. And then I'm gonna plug this into the wall. In addition to humidity, carbon dioxide is one of the most important factors that we need to control in an indoor growing environment. This is a sealed off space. So as this substrate is broken down and decomposing, it's gonna release carbon dioxide. That's what mushrooms do. So in nature, when a mushroom is decomposing a log, for example, it's gonna be diffusing that carbon dioxide into the ambient air. Now, as the mushroom tries to pin and grow, it needs higher levels of oxygen in order to do that. If you think about a mushroom trying to pin under the bark of a tree, this little baby mushroom is gonna stretch and snake its way out of the bark in order to find that high oxygen environment. 
The reason why it needs that environment is because it's indicative of airflow, and airflow is how spores are dispersed. So this is their way of knowing that they're in a good place to release their spores. Inside the Martha tent, because we don't have diffusion of air, the carbon dioxide levels are gonna increase really quickly. This is a problem for pinning mushrooms. However, it's easily solved by just adding a fan to move fresh air through it. We wanna decrease the carbon dioxide levels and increase the oxygen levels, and the way we do that is by providing plenty of fresh air exchange. So before we install our duct fan, I wanna talk about positive and negative pressure systems. So depending on how we install this fan, we can make a positive or negative pressure. If we have the air blowing outside of the tent, we're gonna be creating a negative pressure system. That's like sticking a vacuum in here. So all this air is gonna rush in through the bottom and go right out like that. If we install it the other way as a positive pressure system, it would balloon this tent out because we're filling it with air, which would make the air rush out over at the bottom. So at this stage in mushroom cultivation, because we're fruiting the mushrooms, we don't really have a high risk for contamination. And a positive pressure system is really good for limiting contamination because you can clean and filter the air before it comes in. However, because we're actually fruiting these mushrooms and we're gonna make a heavy spore load inside this tent, we're gonna make a negative pressure system which is gonna pull the air in from the bottom and direct the spores either out the window or into a filter so the spores aren't entering our living space. And we're gonna just lift the cover off Stick our fan in, air pointing out the back, right in the peak of it. We'll look, take the power cord and just dangle that around the back and we'll pull that out the back just like we did with the other power cords. So we're gonna take a marker and just cut a more narrow hole than the four inch duct. And that way we can squeeze it through and make a pretty tight seal just around the plastic and the fan. So we're gonna take our Sharpie and we're just gonna outline inside here pretty rough, but just so we make a small enough hole that it makes a pretty good tight seal. So just take it real slow. It's kind of a pain. There we go. So we'll slide this fan back into place where we want it. And there we go. So now we have a negative pressure system where the air is gonna be rushing out this way and we're gonna be able to direct and trap our spores. At this point, we have this nice seal and we're going to either attach a filter so the spores are getting trapped um, before they come out into our living space or we're going to attach ducting. But to give you an example, we're gonna put the filter on right now. So these are really simple, they're really easy. Uh, they will get dirty and clogged over time, but they're really easy to just spray out and clean. They're cheap, they're easy to replace. So we're gonna take the filter and our hose clamp and we're just gonna slide it over the top here and I'm gonna support the back of the fan a bit because it slides around. And so we have it on like that. That looks good. We're just gonna tighten it up a bit with the screwdriver. And there you have it. If you have a window, an even better option is to duct the outflow of the fan right out the window. If you don't have access to a window, you have the filter patch on and this step is all done. However, we really like to pump the air outside so we're not filling our indoor spaces with the spores. Our Martha tent build is complete. We have our air exchange system, we have our humidity control system. You know we placed this by the window because we have the duct 
there's a few other things to consider with placement. So as you know, with the Martha tent, we're controlling the airflow through this fan and the humidity through the ultrasonic humidifier. Two things we're not really able to control are temperature and light. Most mushrooms fruit great between temperatures of 55 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. However, they tend to fruit better at the lower end of that range. And that of course is dependent on the species and their specific temperature requirements, and maybe even the strain of the species that you're growing. Mushrooms don't photosynthesize like plants do, but they do like having some light. This helps kind of tell them which direction they should grow. If you can imagine the dappled sunlight on a forest floor, that's a pretty ideal thing to mimic here. So in our Martha tent, we don't want to have that much direct sunlight on it. This can cause a lot of problems. It can raise the temperature, it can dry out our mushrooms, it could raise the substrate to harmful temperatures. For that reason, we're going to keep our Martha tent out of direct sunlight, but we're going to keep it in a pretty bright area, an area with some amount of ambient light. If I had to put this in a closet or someplace dark, I would definitely want to add some supplemental lighting, nothing major, just to help the mushrooms know which way to grow. Based on just placement, this feels like a good spot to me. We got the window right here. It's out of the way. We've got a good normal temperature in here. We've got electricity and I think we're good to go. So we're gonna go fill this up because we don't have running water in our outbuilding, which is ironic because it's raining right now, but we're just gonna go right up over here. We turned everything on. Uh, it seems like our systems are working fine. You can see the ultrasonic humidifier working down there at the bottom. Uh, the fan running at the top to provide that fresh air exchange. You can see this negative pressure in here. It's kind of getting sucked in a little bit. This is a pretty ideal fruiting chamber. So let's get some colonized substrate in here and start growing some mushrooms. So one really great thing about Martha tents is that they're really excellent at fruiting mushrooms, regardless of the method you're using to colonize the substrate. You can see here we have some colonized bags and we have some colonized trays up top too. So we're gonna close this up and we're gonna walk away. And we're gonna come back when there's some mushrooms here. So it's been a little while. Our Martha tent is looking great. We have a lot of really beautiful flushes of mushrooms here. They look perfect. Um, in fact, our Martha tent is doing so good that the top trays we already had to harvest and now we're waiting for the second flush from them. If your mushrooms don't look quite this good, you might have to adjust some of the parameters inside your Martha tent or move your Martha tent to a more suitable location. If you have skinny stems or fruit bodies or growth resembling coral, it could be because the carbon dioxide levels were too high. If you have fuzzy stems, the cause could be excessive carbon dioxide levels or excessive moisture. If your caps are brown or cracked, it could be because there's not enough humidity or because they were harvested too late. If your growth stopped after pinning, it could be due to low humidity or because of a temporary drop in the proper humidity. If the fruiting bodies are pale, it could be because of a high temperature or because of a low light environment. If there was no growth at all, it could be because of high carbon dioxide, high temperatures, or because your substrate wasn't fully colonized, or because your substrate was too dry. Keep in mind when you're filling your Martha tent, not to just cram it full. I know it can be really tempting, 
but maintaining the right amount of spacing between your substrate really helps you manage the conditions inside the tent and avoid a lot of the problems we just talked about. We really hope this video inspires you to build a Martha tent of your own. They're really easy, they're really reliable, and they're really consistent. And it's a great way to grow delicious, fresh, edible, and medicinal mushrooms in your own home. If you like this video as much as we liked making it, press the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to our channel.